In the book, Who's Who in the Bible, of course, the presence of Abraham looms large. With, with Abraham, we get sort of a roadmap on the three great monotheistic traditions in our civilization, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. But what people may not be familiar with is the fact that a crucial role is played by Hagar. Hagar is the concubine who lies with Abraham and Sarah cannot conceive, and she gives him a son called Ishmael. And just as Abraham's son Isaac will become the ancestor of a great nation, the 12 tribes of Israel, the angel tells Hagar that her son Ishmael will be the ancestor of a multitude of nations as well. And in fact, Genesis even names the, some of these tribes, these people that ultimately descend from Ishmael, such as Nebaioth, or Kedar, or Tima, Genesis 25, 13. Well, when you look at Assyrian texts, and Muslim texts, and even Roman texts, all of these names reappear. The Nebaioth are called Nabot in Arabic, and would become the Nabataeans in Roman times. Kedar, are of course the Kedarites, or Kadyar in Arabic, and Tima is perhaps linked to the great oasis of Tema today in Northwest Arabia. Now we know that Islam considers itself the spiritual heir of Ishmael, as Ishmael is called in the Quran, as the father of Arab tribes, but not many people may realize that this idea actually begins in Genesis, the first great book of the Bible.